Okay, so now we're going to talk about the front end of Odoo, the views, how people interact with the data. We want to make sure that we require people to put in the right information. We want to clean things up so that they only have to put in the information that we want so we have some efficiencies in place. This is all very important stuff, so let's get into it. Okay, so here we are again in Odoo. This may look a little bit different because we're using Odoo's demo right now, which is nice and easy if we want to try some things out. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're going to be acting like developers. So we want to be in developer mode. We're going to click the monkey. And then a nice little trick that I should have shown you before, but hopefully you can use it now, is we can type or start typing here in the home screen and we can come in and we can see, okay, I can jump right to technical user interface views. So we're here now, and at best, <laughs> this is going to be something that you understand, but for most people, I'm guessing this will be pretty confusing, but you may recognize some of these uh, form view type, Kanban view type, search, maybe not, tree is another name for list view, but I wanted to show you Basically, this is a list of all the different views that we have inside of Odoo, and sometimes it can be useful to have this so that we can get to it another way. Now that we've done that, though, let's go back out to the home screen. And we're going to go into sales yet again with the typing. And we're going to start to understand what views are. So anytime we're seeing information inside of Odoo, there's a view attached. That's the basic concept. But the easiest way to show you how views are represented and how they're kind of organized inside of Odoo, in my mind, is to go into Studio. When we go into Studio, Odoo is going to assume that we want to edit the view we're currently on, which right now is a list view. We're going to go ahead and look a little bit deeper. You see up here, we can click on Views. So when we click on this, we see, okay, I've got my Form view, my Search view, Activity view, obviously I don't need to read all of these for you, but we have all these different types of views that by default Odoo has given us access to. Some of them you may never use, some of them you may be grateful that I've just shown you that you can use these. Our basic ones are, are usually going to be form and list view, and then Kanban is also used pretty often. Because a great deal of data entry is going to happen through form views, I mean normally you don't put in data through the list view, although we can do that, and I'll show you how to do that, we're going to start out with form view. So this should look fairly familiar, especially if you've been poking around in Odoo. We've got some buttons up here. We have some fields right here. Again, fields, talking about our, our data structure. So we can look and we can say, okay, for customer field, it's read only, but with this minus sign, we can see it's conditionally read only. Okay, and we'll spend a bit of time on that too. It is required every time when we come in to create a new sale, we have to have a customer. So hopefully that makes sense. So requiring these fields, making them conditionally invisible or even conditionally read only is all a part of what we call form control, which is essentially saying in this instance, I want this information from you. In this instance, I want this information for you. This makes it so that we can control how people are interacting with this system, and it also can make sure that we don't end up with garbage in, garbage out. We're getting good information, and we're keeping our processes nice and efficient. So to illustrate this, we're going to go ahead and add a new character field. And we're going to go ahead and name this. So let's go ahead and do some form control with this guy. So first, we're going to make it conditionally invisible. Okay, We're going to go ahead and say, based on the customer, if the customer is not set, meaning it's empty, we're going to go ahead and make this invisible. And you'll see after it loads, the customer is already set on this, but if it wasn't, this would be invisible. We're going to go ahead and also make this required if the customer is set, which again, if you remember properly, customer is required, so it's always going to be set, but here we go. So we're going to go ahead and add a condition, okay, 
And we're going to go ahead and say customer is set so that it's required when it's set. Lastly, after a certain point, we may want to make this read only, make it so that people cannot edit this anymore because we want to preserve data integrity. So we'd come into the initial and we'd say, okay, for our status, if we get to where this is not quotation, so we're going to say is not equal, that's that exclamation mark equals. If it does not equal draft, then we're not going to allow anybody to change this anymore. Certainly with any of these three, we may want to be able to say, hey, this is always invisible, or it's always required, or it's always read only. It's just nice to be able to know that you can make that conditional as well. So those things can kind of change as this sales order develops. So there are other things that we can set. This help tool tips nice because when we mouse over it, it will give instructions for the field for people. Um, we can also change the widget which kind of shows how the text is displayed and has some different things to it that can make it easy for us to throw more in. There's a lot here to mess with and I won't necessarily go over it at this point. Okay, uh, placeholder, we can go ahead and put in a placeholder, meaning you know something until we actually fill it out. We can set a default value, um, which is essentially saying, okay, by default, this is what we're gonna put in here. And we can also, and this is super helpful, we can limit the visibility of this field to certain groups. So say there's a higher level group and we only want them seeing this field, we can go ahead and select that here. And that's actually super useful. Because relationships are so important inside of our data structure, I wanna show you as well, if we're to add another relational field, so this is a many to one field. This is saying that this record can tie to one other field Okay, or one other, sorry, one other model. Okay, we're not going to necessarily say that this can tie to multiple records in another model. We'll go into this a little bit more later, but we're gonna go ahead and tie this to a warehouse. Okay. We're gonna name this properly. Now that we've done all that, we're going to go ahead and look at some other little options here. So we can say disable creation, which means we don't want people creating things on the fly, which is always a good choice. It's so easy for people to fat finger things, press enter, create a new record. We don't want people creating warehouses on the fly. We can disable opening, meaning they can't go directly to this. Um, and yeah, you can see this here, no quick create, which means that we can't just press enter, create a new one. and no create edit means we can't go in, edit it, change it up. So obviously these are good things to check the checkbox on. The domain is something very important here, okay? So we can come in and we can actually limit this list. So when you click on this field, you're gonna get a drop down of all the warehouses. But because we wanna keep it kind of limited, we can come in and add a condition and say, okay, I want to make sure that the company ID is the same as the company I'm operating in right now. You may or may not know, you know, do you can have multiple companies in one place. So we could say the company is equal to one, which is probably nothing, but it's good to be able to limit this list. So again, we have proper form control. We're going to go ahead and stop here for now. I don't want my videos to get too terribly long, but we'll go into more with form view later on endless view, Kanban view and the other views. Um, hopefully you found this useful. If you have anything that you want a little bit more explanation on, please go ahead and drop that in the comments. Appreciate it. Thanks.